Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Lychee Slicer, which is a great alternative to Cheetu Box for all of you Resin 3 printer users out there. Oh, and by the way, it might end up becoming my go-to slicer for all of my resin 3D prints. All right, so this is Lychee Slicer. You can see that I've already got some files preloaded up on here that I've run off and sliced and ready for printing. But before we do that, I wanna actually go back through how I got here. Uh, first of all, before I can do any of this, I need to load up a printer profile here in Lychee. And that makes it really easy because they support a number of different printers that are out there. So you can click on the Add Printer button here and you'll see a full list of different printer companies that are out there. Today we're gonna to be focusing on Elgu. They've got the Mars, Mars 2 Pro, Mars C, Mars Pro, and the Saturn. Today we're gonna to be printing with the Mars 2 Pro. And then down below, we also have different resin setting options for all of your different printers. So far, I've really only worked with this with ABS like gray from Elgu. And here is an example set of my settings that I'm working with here. This is based off of a file that I found on the Elgu Mars Facebook group. So I'm just working with settings someone else created and uh, applied my Vroom settings to this. And if you're interested in more info on Vroom, I'll have links up above. This is how you can print really fast with just keeping the same settings in place. So one of the main reasons why I've been interested in switching over to Lychee from something like Cheetu Box is simply because it is so stable and easy to work with. Cheetu Box is continually <laughs> crashing on me and driving me crazy, or the last time I did an upgrade, I ended up losing all of my profiles and had to go through this whole exercise to get those back. So far, so good with Lychee though, and it's working really good, and they've got some fantastic features. By the way, here's Lychee's website where you can go and download the software for yourself it works on Mac or PC. I'm a Mac user, so that's great that it works there and it runs really great. Uh, there is a free version and it'll give you the ability to do most of all the tools and capabilities that you need to actually uh, slice, support, and get your file ready for 3D printing. And then there's a pro version that's gonna have a lot of extra features built into it along with no ads that you're gonna run into with the free version. Currently, the version I'm gonna be showing you is the pro version. That's the one that I picked up last, I think it was November, I picked up their annual subscription plan. Uh, yes, it's a month to month subscription or you can pay in advance in a, uh, annually and you're gonna end up saving a good chunk of change. But there's lots of printers that are supported and the big thing is it's just really easy to work with their supports and getting those placed and adjusting them. So they have lots and lots and lots of different cool features in here and one of my favorite ones that they have that I haven't seen in basically a lot of other printer softwares, is the ability to use NetFab directly in the software to clean up and uh, fix a lot of your print issues that you might have with some of your files. So back here in the slicer, we're gonna take a look at this Nazgul file and actually let's go through the entire process from start to finish. So here I'm gonna delete this Nazgul and we're gonna load him in, and you see it's absolutely huge. These are all by Photos Mint. These are his Lord of the Ring figures that he's created. I'm gonna knock this back down to 50%. Uh, what's great about this as well is at any point in time, I can leave and go back to like, let's say Frodo here. I've already scaled at 30%, and it just retains the scaling here. Uh, at any point in time, you can come back to this and adjust these. So if I wanted to reset the scale, I could reset that or control Z and it's gonna bring me back to my 50% uh, scale here that we were working with previously. Over on the left-hand side are all of your navigation controls and some of your functional controls. So I can click and drag this guy around here or I can say rotate and we're gonna rotate this around and flip them back this way. And that is looking pretty good. Got them slightly angled and it's I think looking uh, all right here and ready for us to run in and look at some of the other things. You can again rotate, scale, move, uh, I can copy a file, I can auto arrange the files in the build plate, I can mirror the file. You can also auto orient, which is great, and then there's an on the plate option, so if I wanted to pick a point and have it auto orient that uh, to that based on the where I've placed it, that's fantastic. Here, let's actually look at the sword. Uh, I'm going to come back over here to our supports and delete those. All right, so I've turned off the raft and I've got my sword and I don't wanna place this. What I wanna do is I wanna come down here. There's this magic button, which it's luck of the draw how this is gonna work, but it's gonna try and auto orient, auto support, auto optimize the supports, put it on a raft for it. You can turn all these on or off however you'd like. 
using the light, medium, or heavy pre-support. So I'm gonna say I'm feeling lucky since it's a pretty small piece here, we're gonna see how it's going to auto-orient this piece. And I can tell you right now, I don't want it blade down, I want it up a little bit, kind of like how I just had it there previously. And you can click this as many times as you'd like as well. So I'm gonna come back in here and just do this until we get it to a position that I like. All right, so that took a few attempts, but it looks like it's done a pretty good job of supporting this and putting it at a slight angle, tilting up and placed supports pretty much where I would have placed them anyways. So let's go back over to the Nazgul and go over to the support workflow. So here you've got along the top layout supports, preview export, along with a little preview of how long it might take to actually print this based on the resin settings that you're working with. And before we run off and do any of the support settings, let's take a look at adding some hollowing functionality to the actual print. So here I've already got it set up to the wall thickness of 2.2. I can adjust this up and make it thicker or lower. Here I'm gonna adjust it back to 2.2 because I think that's gonna be pretty good based on this particular model here. I can also look at adding a hole to this as well. And uh, that was a little weird. Um, here I can adjust this, the largest, this is the my only complaint with this, is that it only allows me to add a hole up to 10 millimeters and I do some pretty big prints and I really want full control over making that much, much, much larger. So for now, I'm just gonna add multiple holes to this and hope for the best. Uh, one other thing as well, if I come back and look at this, is the infill. Uh, slightly different than Chi2Box is Chi2Box adds supports inside of it uh, when you do auto supports, but this is gonna apply an infill to the print. So here we're gonna apply an infill of 10%. If I wanted to adjust that and make it higher or lower, you can play around with that and see how it's gonna work for you. But to get back to the supports, I'm just gonna click on the support button here on the right hand side. And I have lots of options for light supports, medium supports, heavy supports, custom supports. Uh, global, the tip, mid, you, I mean, you give full control over how you're gonna add supports here. One of the cool things for all of you folks out there that like to add manual supports is that you can find all of the different islands that you're gonna see on your particular file. So I'm gonna click on the search button. It's gonna run its process here and find and let me know where all those islands are that if I am manually placing those supports, where I need to keep an eye out for that. And hey, I'm seeing an issue uh, that, uh, you know what, these files might be blocking my view. So I can come up to objects and actually turn those off. So it makes it much easier for me to see when I'm doing all of my support work here. For me, I'm a big fan of the auto supports and manually adjusting. So I'm gonna set this to medium. I really haven't built out my own predefined supports just yet here. So I'm gonna say generate, it's gonna lift up the file because I've set it to lift it up by eight millimeters. We'll let it print, uh, we'll let it do its thing here and process through this. And oops, I clicked on that way too quick, but it was giving me a notification that it let me know that it made some adjustments and auto supported that. I'm gonna turn my raft on for this guy as well because I like that. Makes it easier for me to remove my prints when I have that little lip there to get the, the, the blade under. And now we can get into some of the fun manual things that you can adjust here in this slicer. So here, what I can do is I've, I wanted to add like another support here. I could just click and add and it's gonna add another tower there of, of support pillar from the top down. But we don't wanna do that. I wanna add a little branch off here. So I can hold down the option key or your alt cl key, click on an area and then directly link it to another support. This makes it very easy for you to start manually placing additional supports off of your other existing supports. You can also do control option and it's gonna add little thin supports here as well. Here, if we wanted to just uh, just show you adding another support from the top to bottom, it's not adding any bracing here. So there's an actual bracing option that I can click this button and it's gonna help generate some extra supports where needed to help this make it much more of a sturdier print for the actual printer. So now we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn these all back on. We can get a quick overview. Yep, everything's looking good. Nothing's overlapping here. I'm gonna go back in and actually before we do that, I'm gonna turn this raft on here 
for this print. And then we're gonna move over into the preview section. So here is one of the cool things that you can do. You have multiple preview options here. So I can see in a real world setting how large the files will look once it's printed. Here you've got your traditional object views and you can run through and cycle through to see how it's gonna print and hold up with the supports or a sliced view. So you can, it's a combination of the prints printing along with what's gonna show up on the screen as well as a picture view. It's just what's showing up on the screen as well as a simulation option here. Very, very cool. The next, we're just gonna export this out. So you have the option to export it for slicing. It is warning me that I have 22 islands. I'm not really concerned with that at this point, uh, as well as I have the ability to export this if I just wanted to create an OBJ of the scene or just export the scene so I can share this entire file with other lychee users. So we're just gonna export this for a print purposes for my Elgu Mars 2 Pro. Now is a great time for me to mention today's video sponsor, which is none other than the folks over at Elgu. They're the makers of the Elgu Mars 2 Pro, as well as the Elgu Saturn, as well as some other really great resins that are available for you to buy and use for your resin 3D printers. Today, we're going to be using the Elgu Mars 2 Pro, as well as their Elgu Wash and Cure Station, along with the Elgu ABS Like Gray Resin. I just want to say thank you so much for Elgu for sponsoring and supporting the channel here. If you're interested in learning more about any of the printers that we're talking about in today's video, you'll find links down below. All right, now that I've got the prints cleaned up here, let's take a quick look at them. And yeah, again, the Nazgul is looking really good. Or is that the Wraith Rider? Nazgul? I'm trying to remember the terms here. Uh, Frodo actually is looking pretty good. He's just got a little tiny hand there, that's all. And then uh, a stump where his other hand is gonna go. I just looks like I need to reprint the sword and that base for Frodo. All right, so here are the revised prints. So I reprinted the sword, as I mentioned there. I actually went in and just added a few extra medium supports to the hand, and it printed properly this time. It didn't come out all broken. Here was the original base as well. I just went in and added some more supports throughout this base. I actually ended up adding just one heavy support in there as well, and it, again, turned out really great. I already had these all cleaned off and ready to be removed from their supports. So we're gonna do that here next. So if you're interested in picking up Lychee Slicer, I'll have links down below to where you can check that out for yourself. It's a really great slicer, again, really easy to work with, and I'll be using this more often here for prints uh, upcoming here in the future. And if you're interested in any of these Lord of the Ring files here from Photos Mint, I'll have links to his Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, a huge, huge, huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I am in the process of uploading all of my Cheetu Box support settings. And as I continue to refine my Lychee support settings, I'll be uploading those there as well. Hey, thanks again for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this quick look at the Lychee Slicer software. Bye now.